Welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to be getting started here in just a, a couple of seconds. Uh, while we're waiting for, um, for participants to join, I do want to note that uh, today's webinar will be recorded and sent out uh, later today. And as we're going through, if you have questions about our topic, please feel free to, um, to send us a message through chat or uh, enter your question in the Q&A box. And today's webinar is on the Raging 20s, Winning the Next Normal. So this is part two of our Winning the Next Normal webinar series, and we're glad to have you joining us. My name is Michelle Richardson. I'm the Vice President of Sales Performance Research Center here at the Brooks Group. And I am joined by Russ Scherer, our Director of uh, Sales Strategy Excellence. Hello, Russ. Hi, Michelle. Great to be with you and everyone else today. I, uh, I was talking to someone this week who said that right now people are looking for sort of peer information more than at any other time through this uh, uh, that they can remember over the last year. Maybe the, the first few weeks of the pandemic was similar, but uh, people want to know what people like them are thinking, and, and that's why we're doing this. Um, and hey, before we get started, I would love just a quick uh, test. If, if all of you who are participating today could send... Um, a, uh, a quick chat uh, to just let us know, what do you think of the title, The Raging Twenties? Is that something that you like or don't like? We, we sort of uh, came up with that kind of to talk about not only the raging uh, virus that we've had to deal with, but just, just all the changes that seems to be going on right now. So uh, just in the chat, would you just kind of give either a thumbs up or a thumbs down or, you know, yeah, I like it. No, I don't. It would be great to, to hear from you all on that. Thanks. All right. Well, wow. let's uh, let's dig into our content again. We're talking about winning the next normal, uh, and uh, I believe Russ, you and I mentioned um, in our last webinar that this is the basis um, of a book that we are uh, that we're writing. Um, should be ready for publication um, towards the end of this year or early January, and it's really all about what is selling going to look like in the next normal. What is um, going to be different about selling, especially with lessons learned coming out of COVID, but also um, changes that were already in place and were already starting to happen before the pandemic uh, started. So, uh, you know, we love your feedback on the content. This is a little bit of a preview of what we'll be covering, and we're excited to share it with you. And our topics for today. Um, I'll be talking to you about uh, what's top of mind. Uh, we put out a survey and asked for input from sales leaders. So we're gonna talk about challenges and priorities. Uh, what is most important to you all as sales leaders now? And then uh, Russ is gonna share his ideas to address those top concerns. Absolutely. And it uh, looks like so far, the, the great overwhelming preponderance is people like the title, The Raging 20. So. <laughs> You may see that in the in the book. Oh, we're, we're, well, who knows? Now the now the anti side is coming, so we'll see what happens yeah. when we uh, yeah. get to the end of the of the session. Well, we've got good um, we've got good perspectives on both sides, right? So we have a balance. Um, and again, just to uh, to reiterate Russ's request as we're going through, let us know what you think of the um, of the title, "The Roaring Twenties" or "The Raging Twenties." I got it messed up now after I read the chat. <laughs> The raging 20s. <laughs> All right. And our sponsor today, by the way, is uh, the Sales Leadership Academy, uh, excuse me, Accelerator. It's our program for sales leaders, uh, helping them get to the place where they can spend more time fireproofing their organizations and less time firefighting in their organizations. We'll talk about that some more. But Michelle, what was on the mind to people as we started talking about and thinking about today? Thanks, Russ. Yes, we, um, as I mentioned, uh, put out a survey, really wanted to understand what was top of mind. We want these, um, these webinars to be really about what is most important to you as our audience. And uh, so here's what came back. So we asked, um, what is uh, your greatest sales leadership challenge right now? And the overwhelming uh, response, the overwhelming kind of theme was talent. Talent is a big concern right now. You know, we're hearing a lot about labor shortages. We're hearing a lot about the great resignation. 
And um, it's real and it's real in all industries and all segments, I think for sure. So recruiting and finding new talent is an issue. Motivating your salespeople, keeping them engaged and encouraged was one of the comments that we heard. And then hiring and getting um, new salespeople productive more quickly. And we also noted, uh, we asked in the survey, what changes um, had organizations already implemented or were they considering for 2022? And 36% indicated they had already um, implemented an increase in sales headcount and another 36% were planning to add headcount in 2022. So this is truly you know, an issue, finding good people, particularly when you're planning to increase the size of your sales force. We also heard that talent was impacting your customers as well. So there were comments about um, contacts with an accounts changing and trying to, to keep up with that dynamic, um, new people coming in with new agendas. Uh, we also heard, and this is another theme that uh, we will we'll talk about more as we go, getting sellers to articulate the value um, with price increases. So really being able to manage price increases, particularly with raw material costs and shipping. Our last webinar was how to, how to implement a price increase. So if you were not able to attend that, you may wanna check that out if this is a concern for you. Uh, we also, um, relative to changes on the customer side, longer decision processes, customers who are a little uncertain about making decisions due to risky market conditions, um, economic conditions and that kind of thing. And again, the ability to work with COVID, to work around COVID, travel restrictions are still in place in some, some areas. Uh, wanting to get face-to-face -face when customers uh, maybe are more hesitant to do so. But again, that big theme, talent, and I think pricing and that profitability piece um, really ended up being kind of the major themes for this question. We also asked, you know, what on top of what is your greatest challenge, as sales leaders, what are your greatest strategic priorities? So from a high level, what are you needing to, to focus on? 35%, this was the, the, the highest number, 35% said strengthening margins and profitability. And I think that's, you know, we've again, talking about price increases, we've been talking about um, increases in raw materials. Um, having to communicate that. So certainly um, margin and profitability um, are really impacting you as sales leaders. 31% uh, said that you needed to win new accounts and 23% said grow existing accounts. So those are really the top three um, strategic priorities here. We also asked a follow-up question and that is um, what's going to get in the way of you all being able to achieve these priorities? 64% said economic conditions impacting your customers. Another 64% said supply chain. So those are critical, critical issues, um, obviously, especially for strengthening your, your margin and, and profitability. 48% um, said uh, in economic conditions impacting your own organization and 44% said insufficient selling skills. So again, our top priorities, strengthening margins, winning new accounts, uh, but you've got these these challenges kind of impeding that progress. Russ, you were going to add. Well, there also seems, I was talking to a client yesterday, there, there seems to be some um, uh, some just sort of strange demand patterns. They talked about how the beginning months of Q3 were really strong, and then September went quiet in their particular industry. And now that it's October, the clients are back buying again and they couldn't figure out why just all of a sudden in one month people would go quiet. I think you're going to see that particularly with the supply chain issues that we've got and maybe concerns over uh, over what's still happening. Although I, I hope that we're kind of seeing the last of uh, Delta related issues um, that you may have be going gangbusters one month and then all of a sudden it just seems like there's nobody there and then it's back to, to gangbusters. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I you know we asked um, another question around how teams are performing year to date. It was a pretty even split between being ahead of plan and being behind plan. Um, Fourteen percent were were right on target, but roughly forty two percent on one side and about forty eight percent on the other were saying you know we're either ahead or behind. So I think to your point, it's a mixed bag, probably depending on your industry. Um, your sales cycle and, and how 
um, Delta in particular has maybe been impacting you as well as supply chain issues. Um, so, so kind of, again, a mixed bag. Yep. All right, our last bit of data here. Uh, we asked our uh, respondents, what are their greatest sales challenges? So we've talked about leadership, so leadership challenges. We've talked about strategic priority. Now, from a sales team perspective, what are your greatest challenges? 52% said managing stalled deals. 40% said um, handling negotiations and price pressure. And then prospecting and closing sales tied for third at uh, 36%. So I think we're getting more comfortable with digital tools. Um, that's uh, an issue for about 28%. So again, where we're really focusing now are getting those deals through and being able to get those deals through profitably. A couple of other trends that kind of relate to this that we saw, 38% um, indicated that the availability of key stakeholders for meetings has declined. 56% say uh, the number of calls required to close the sale has increased. 63% say uh, changes in buyer priorities during the sales process has increased. And I think all of that coming in together um, is a recipe for deals slowing down or getting stuck in the process. The, uh, the other statistic, Michelle, that struck me in looking at all of this was uh, you talked about the mixed bag of some people being ahead of plan or behind plan. Uh, but but overwhelmingly, everybody had, uh, not everyone, the vast majority of people had uh, increases in their 2022 plan, either slightly right. to, to very large. So, right. uh, you know, no matter what's happened in 2021, 2022, they're going to ask for more, which is, I think, right. a big sales challenge. Right. Absolutely. And I think that number was higher than we even saw last year, because yeah. I remember we asked that question last year, uh, even with 2020 and the economic conditions there. Um, I want to say it was in the, the 40% range we're expecting an increase in their, um, in their target for, for 2021. So again, regardless, as you said, regardless of how you're doing this year, expect it to expect that number to go up. And a word from our sponsor. So Russ mentioned our sales leadership accelerator uh, at the beginning of our session. Um, you know, if, as we've been talking about some of these challenges, if you're feeling these challenges, if these are things that are hitting home to you, uh, you may want to consider our sales leadership accelerator. It is a in the in-person version is a two and a half day workshop. And we talk about things. We, uh, we work through um, topics around, related to uh, recruiting and selection. So how do you find the right talent? How do you coach the right talent? How do you use a sales process to really help manage deals through the funnel um, and really help your team uh, to be able to hold price. So if this is an option um, or, or something for consideration, please uh, email us at contact at the brooksgroup.com for more information. Our next in-person session starts November 16th. Um, our next virtual session, we do offer this as an eight session virtual program starts November 1st. Uh, and if you're interested in dates even beyond November um, into 2022, again, uh, email contact at thebrooksgroup.com and producer Rich has put that information um, in the chat. You have uh, probably all heard of the fact that sometimes we work in the business. Well, this is clearly an on the business uh, investment, not only in the rest of 2021, but 2022 and beyond. So. Especially if you're one of those people that has their budget um, increasing for next year, perhaps you want to get rolling on. <laughs> on strategies to make that happen. Absolutely. So let's talk about some of these big issues. Um, the, the one around pricing and holding margin, we did a whole webinar on that in September the 17th. You can go to our website, uh, brooksgroup.com and look for resources. And, and uh, uh, the, the material that was in there was really good about addressing pricing. Uh, we're going to hit sort of three additional ones. The resource one around talent, uh, one around margin, and then uh, ultimately how to handle stalled deals. That's our uh, our hints for the rest of the day. And number one, I would say when looking at hiring, don't settle. Uh, there have been a lot of studies done that the cost of a bad hire, somebody you put into a territory, uh, they, they uh, struggle to get up to speed and you ultimately have to let them go, can sometimes cost as much as maybe three or five times that person's annual salary. 
Uh, but to me, and from my experience, worse than a bad hire is a mediocre hire. Somebody who shows up in the territory, never quite gets all the way to the number. They're doing 80%. They're going to take up the full seat at the table. They take up all the costs and, and they just create for you an underperforming territory. And uh, from my experience, not only does that hurt the overall, uh, your overall performance as a sales leader, uh, but it also the rest of the team looks and loses respect. They don't want to work with that person. Uh, I was reminded of somebody who, who worked for me for a while. I was probably too late in pulling the trigger and letting him go. Um, but it cost me a really good sales engineer. And two of my customers told me that they were glad that that person was gone because they decided never to do business with them again. So uh, uh, don't settle, F find the right people. So how do you do that? Uh, number one, I always say, keep a list of your next hires. Uh, things are opening up, go to a trade show, go to an association, um, watch the interactions that you have. We had a client one time who hired a salesperson for his team based off an interaction he had at a retail establishment. He said, this person understands uh, how to frame issues, how to do good customer service. He's somebody that I want on my sales team. So uh, I think every good sales manager should always have um, three or four people that, that they could call and at least offer the position to. Uh, I'd also encourage you to look internally. Um, some of the best hires I made in my career came out of other departments. Uh, we brought a, a guy out of uh, quality assurance one time. He knew the product. He was very hands-on, but he had a great ability to adjust into sales and uh, created the second largest territory for us over the course of the next three to five years. Um, other clients have taken people out of the warehouse because they understand sort of the flow of orders and what happens and uh, particularly good in terms of getting out um, uh, and talking to folks. Maybe it's from your customers. More and more I'm hearing of customers who are moving uh, from someone who was involved with you, who was maybe using your product or a uh, subject matter expert and in, in person in your client's organization, moving over and becoming sales. Um, and then there's also this other one that says, maybe what I need is not more salespeople. Maybe what I need is just more sales time. And to do that, looking at adding, say, administrative help. That's something that we've skinnied down on throughout most of the U.S. over the last few years. Uh, and sometimes a good administrator who can do quotes, who can follow up on quotes, who can work on proposals, giving your salespeople more face time, those can be easier to hire. Uh, they can be training grounds for people who ultimately want to get into sales, uh, and they can help in the short term to be able, and long term maybe as well, to be able to boost your numbers. Uh, and then around motivation, uh, I would say that, um, uh, first of all, it's not always about comp. One of the things we're seeing right now is that that people who are successful in almost every case um, are, are not moving unless it's just a ridiculously large amount of money. Again, people who are good. Uh, there's always the ability to hire salespeople who are underperforming quota. Uh, and as long as you'll move them over and, and guarantee them something, they'd be glad to do that. Um, so, so think about the entire role and package that you have. Uh, that includes asking questions like, um, of my existing team, is it a won't do or a can't do issue? A can't do means they need to train or maybe they need a mental health break or maybe they just need some way of refreshing. If it's a won't do, that's a different issue. You can try and coach and get to the why. Um, and we have some tools around assessing folks that give us the ability to, uh, to look to see if there's other things that are going on in their life that are blocking them or if it's just a mismatch. They may be very personable, but not driven to close sales. They're, they're maybe your friendliest person on staff doesn't mean they know how to ask for, for the order. Has the role changed? We've seen some cases where because of the last 18 months, they've moved their teams and said, we want you to take good care of our existing customers. They've turned hunters into farmers uh, and that frustrates everyone. Uh, we've also seen where they've had some people who were on the inside in customer service and now they're saying, hey, I want you to be a salesperson. And so if the roles change, look to see if uh, if you've got your, the right people in the role and if you're compensating them correctly. Uh, and then the last one is sometimes you adjust the finish line. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm a United frequent flyer and I got an email a couple of months ago that said, hey, fly to the finish. We know you're not going to get to the level that you normally do, but over the next three months, if you push hard to these sort of subset of goals, then we'll qualify you for the year. So maybe you need to look at quota adjustments or something that allows every individual to be able to say, boy, if I work hard, I can get to that number and it's, and it's for me. If you've ever been in a position, and unfortunately I have to admit I have, where 
I've looked at the number and just said, there's just no way I get it. It's that much harder to get out of bed. You want to believe you can hit the number, not believe you're going to miss it. Uh, the next one is around uh, the idea of more margin. Uh, how do we hold on to those? And um, boy, we have a we have a whole program that we talk about selling against um, low price competition, how to do better negotiation. Uh, but the key things that I would encourage you to do is first of all, slow down. The sales managers sometimes we're in such a hurry to understand can the deal close, can the deal close, can the deal close, that the salespeople don't have the ability to really understand why they're any different. Um, and so I love these two questions. Ask your salespeople, why is this customer going to buy from us? And they're usually pretty good at explaining to us. And you will know by listening to that, is that a generic benefit where, well, they just, you know, they like me, it's our relationship, it's, it's service. Those usually don't hold much margin in them. Um, and then I always like to ask the question, why won't they buy? What are the reasons why they would either stay with an existing supplier or go somewhere else? If your salespeople haven't learned enough about the account to answer those two questions, you're going to get pushed on margin because they have done nothing to differentiate what they do. Uh, we teach a tool called the value formula. We've talked about it on, on sessions before where you really kind of go through and understand this uh, why and why not. And I had a client I was working with a couple of months ago. We just did this simple exercise. Why should they buy? Why shouldn't they? And, uh, and all of a sudden, one of their people spoke up and said, well, now I understand why no one is buying this because all of the costs were short-term and all the benefits were long-term. So they looked at how they could reshape that or offer in order to be better. Um, and then second of all, know where you stand as a vendor. Uh, ask the question. Do not be afraid to say, how would you rate us as a vendor if you're already doing business with them? And if they're a prospect, what are the traits of your top vendors? And measure yourself to see how are we going to line up with that? Um, sometimes it can be scary to ask those questions. Uh, people will tell me that in class. But if you don't know where you stand, how do you know if you can improve? And uh, again, as a sales manager, great question to ask your salesperson. And those three different questions, you'll get a lot of insight into um, are we going to be able to hold margin? Do they see the value that we bring as a company? Or on the other hand, are they um, uh, no differentiation and therefore we may slip away? Please, please, please do not believe that relationship is going to help you significantly on the first buy. A lot of study has been done in this. Relationships can help on the second and sub subsequent buys. But if it's a new customer, they tend not to buy from you just because you are a good person. So there's got to be value that your company or your product or your service uh, brings to them uh, beyond just being somebody different. And uh, that's really the best way to, to get into hold on to margin. Uh, and then finally, more decisions. Uh, how do you get people to, to not stall? Uh, and, and believe me, we understand this. Even here at the Brooks Group, we have the <laughs> same sort of process sometimes, the same sort of issue. A um, couple of things. One, understand, this isn't on the chart, but understand what their process is. Um, if, if they're going to buy from you and the, the user uh, says, yep, you're our choice, but now I've got to send it to legal, that's going to slow a deal down. And so understand everything that's got to get done before the, the deal can be closed. Uh, number two, don't stop selling too soon. I can't tell you how often we're working with clients and I'll say, okay, you've gone through all this. You've learned what the value is. How do you present your quotes? And they're like, oh, we just put them together in an email and send it out. And you lose that opportunity to do two things. One, to, to reiterate the value that you've got, going back to the previous question around margin. Um, but second of all, you don't get a chance to ask them, how do you react to that? What does it look like? What's your next step? Um, don't stop selling until you've got that commitment from the person that they're going to buy. When someone starts to stall, we also teach, be sure to understand if it's a stall or an objection. What's the difference? A stall is somebody saying, um, you know, I just, I got to think about it. And it could be because they're maybe not the decision maker. It could be that they're going to go get a quote from the incumbent and users against them. Uh, if they tell you they need to think it over, give them the space to do that, affirm it. Sure, it's great. Be glad for you to think it over. But could you just tell me which part of the proposal you want to think over? What part is uh, the part that's concerning you? Sometimes a stall is just a way to hide an objection. 
Um, and then if they have an objection, that's clear. Doesn't mean you can clear it, but they will say, gee, I'm, I can't get over the fact that in your proposal, I, I can't do X, or you don't have this capability, maybe this feature we need, or, uh, or I, I, um, uh, you know, I'm not convinced that, that you're really going to do a better job than my current supplier. Uh, so both those a stall and objection require you to dig back in and really sort of understand what those are. And then once you're in that uh, sort of ghost period, we'll call it, um, be able to reinforce value. We've used video emails to summarize the, the points um, of value. They're easy for those things to be forwarded to other people in the decision-making process. Uh, we ask ourselves, what else could our contact use to help them be more successful in presenting this to, to the other people that they may be meeting with? Uh, can you bring in other voices, subject matter experts, or something that has the ability to, uh, to, to help you um, communicate uh, the value that you've got? We'll sometimes bring in uh, some of our uh, subject matter experts, our facilitators, Michelle, from her uh, analytic and statistics background, uh, all can come in and can help recognize that this is a, a full commitment to be able to do this. Uh, recognize, again, that that when people really want something, they tend not to wait. It's why impulse buys work. It's why um, uh, you know many bars exist in hotel rooms and people are pay willing to pay outrageous amounts of money. Uh, it, it's why I was at a, a Major League Baseball playoff game this week. Um, I bought a Coke and it cost me $10.95, uh, but I wanted it. And so I didn't deal with the price. Um, so if you've done a good job in terms of understanding their value and you're reinforcing it, that should help on stalls. It uh, doesn't always, but um, if you understand the buying process, if you've checked all the boxes around stalls and objections, and you're reinforcing your value, those are all things that we think can help. That's what we've got. Any questions? If you've got a question, go ahead and hit the Q&A window or the chat window. We'd be glad to, to answer those. Uh, in, in the meantime, um, we were doing kind of a quick poll and chat around this, uh, this phrase, the raging 20s, uh, kind of capsulizing uh, the idea that not only has there been a virus raging, and uh, that's put so many of us on edge about a number of different subjects, uh, but also just sort of the churning that's happening in business and professional worlds today. Uh, so if you have a question, just uh, pop it up there in the chat, or just let us know, what do you think of the raging 20s as a, as a title? Uh, Michelle mentioned earlier, we're working on a book, and that's uh, part of the working title that we're using right now. And it looks like you did. We did have a question on why Raging 20s. So you did, um, you did address that. It just felt appropriate for the last year that we've been living. <laughs> and yes, it is a play off the roaring 20s of the 1900s. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll have a great economic burst like they did then. Uh, the downside, of course, is that they had a pretty miserable 30s because of it. And nobody really <laughs> wants to see that. Um, all right. Well, let me just kind of wrap up with sort of what do you what do you take away from this that you should put into practice? Uh, number one, looking for talent. Don't settle, but get creative in terms of where you can find people or find support people in your organization to uh, to help you. Um, if if you're trying to hold on to margin, slow down and ask them some questions while they're by. Uh, why they wouldn't buy, um, how we rank as a vendor, what's important in vendors and how we line up with that. Uh, those, are, those are critical, that perception of how we are. To, uh, to get the decisions done, don't stop selling too soon. Don't just fire over the, the proposal uh, and then fire up with a few text messages or follow up with a few text messages. Be there, walk them through the quote, even if it's on the phone so you can get their immediate feedback. And then between the period of, of them saying, I need to think about it or, or whatever it might be, and then giving you a commitment, make sure you're periodically in touch to reinforce your value. Uh, and, and do it as a reinforcement of value. Don't you, you do it as a, hey, I'm just calling to see where that purchase order is, you promised me, or see where you are on that quote. Um, at this point, you've got to continue to assume that it's not totally sold, so reinforce the value that's there. And Russ, I wanted to just circle back on the, on the talent um, piece of it. And you mentioned, you know, don't settle, get creative. You talked about um, how positions may have changed, particularly during the pandemic. And we've, we've seen a lot of that. If, any, if you all have questions, want to talk through perhaps how your positions have changed, what kinds of requirements you're seeing, um, what your talent issues are, 
we have a, um, a talent management practice, happy to, um, you know, to talk with you and, and even give you some suggestions of what we've seen in working with other organizations. So, um, you know, another area, if you're interested at all or have questions on that, email us at contact at the brooksgroup.com. We'll be happy to, yeah. um, to share some insights. Great point, Michelle. We have seen significant um, improvement in their uh, both voluntary and involuntary turnover rates by using assessments and making sure that you're getting the right people to fit the right jobs. Absolutely. All right. Well, again, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, our next webinar is on Friday, November 19th. Uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time, another, another opportunity to lunch and learn with us. Um, if you are interested in the Sales Leadership Accelerator, um, be sure to email us at contact at the All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll, uh, we'll see you in November. Sounds good. Thank you.